Welcome to the Model Health Show. This is fitness and nutrition expert, Sean Stevenson, and I'm so grateful for you tuning in with me today. Listen, today is really important because I wanna address a topic that I feel is the number one most influential thing on our health, on our fitness, on our overall well-being, and even our success in life, and that is our relationships. Specifically, I wanna talk about something called ROR. Right, you've probably heard of ROI, right? Return on investment. This is return on relationships. And I think that this is the biggest marker, the biggest commodity, this the biggest value source that you're gonna be seeing as we move into the future. All right, but today is going to be a masterclass assessment of our relationships. Some insights, some things that we wanna consider, some things that we are gonna be able to improve and just overall opportunity for us to grow and for us to truly tap into that model health when it comes to our relationships. Now, when you think about it, just kind of being logical in your mind, how much harder is it? So we're talking about specifically our relationships and how it impacts our health. How much harder is it to be healthy and to make healthy choices when everyone around you is simultaneously smashing some Krispy Kremes, All right? It makes it harder for sure. I mean, this is just kind of common knowledge, but of course we can have the will and we can persevere through those environments, but wouldn't we like to make it a little bit easier on ourselves? Wouldn't we like to stack conditions in our favor to make great choices the norm, right? And again, that doesn't mean that folks can't have donuts, but it's just, please understand, if there's something we're wanting to consistently have as a part of our life and we're consistently needing to battle the environment around us, we're setting ourselves up for failure. All right, so also same thing with our relationships and our specifically our intimate relationships or our family relationships. If you're constantly fighting all the time, it's harder to get yourself up. It's harder to get yourself in the right state of mind for you to execute on the things that you really want. You can still do it, all right? It's a true story. And I was probably on vacation when I watched this. You know, when you're on vacation, you probably do some stuff you don't normally do. I watched a documentary on Katy Perry. All right, so this full disclosure, this happened. And it was pretty interesting. And there came a scene where she was getting divorced from her husband, Russell Brand, right? And she's just getting the news, like getting off the phone. He's like, I'm, I'm out, I'm out, Katie. And so she's going through a lot of emotional turmoil. And she's got like 20,000 fans out in the crowd waiting on her to come up to perform, all right? And so she's like bawling her eyes out. And she gets onto her little elevator to lift her up through the stage. You know how the big baller, uh, performers do she's coming up and she's crying still she wipes those tears right before her head pops up and just puts on stone cold killer face right i don't want you to have to be like that all right and suppressing of course you've got a job to do you can execute you can show up like that but how about we eliminate some of the drama to begin with all right so we don't put ourselves in the same position as the katy perry laugh now cry later all right i hope that makes sense so Please keep in mind, again, your relationships, in my opinion, in the context of working with thousands of people in a one-on-one -on -one situation, one-on-one -on -one context clinically, and also now impacting the lives of millions of people at this point, all right? I truly do believe your relationships matter more than anything because it's the catalyst for everything. And so now I want to talk about something else when you get into a tough spot, all right? I was in a pretty tough spot yesterday with my nutrition, all right? It was not expected to be that way, but it happens, you know? But again, what is your default? And so yesterday, uh, my son had an assembly, you know, he had to do his little public speaking, my six-year-old son, Brayden. And man, he really owned the stage. It was so beautiful. My wife cried, all right? Oh, he came out and said two sentences, right? But he it was so eloquent and it was so... There's so much confidence that he didn't have, you know, a year ago or two years ago that he's been developing. And it's really special to see. But from there, we immediately needed to bounce over to uh, this movie theater here in St. Louis that I actually rented out yesterday. I rented out a theater to bring in some inner city uh, students from uh, a school called Confluence Academy. And I brought in their entire seventh and eighth grade class and bought, and bought out the movie theater uh, for them to see Black Panther. And I thought that it was a really timely opportunity to give them examples of what's possible, you know, to start to think outside of the paradigm, to get them out of the typical classroom setting as well, but to see themselves differently, right? To be able to understand that they, they have more ways to make it out of their current circumstances. And the funny thing is, I grew up in the area that they live in right now, right? And I've shared this on the show before, but, you know, even the studio that we're in now, 
you know, things are kind of renovated here in this part of town. So it's, it's getting nicer for sure. And there are spots that are incredibly nice and affluent, but just a couple blocks from here, like I literally lived next door to a crack house. Like that was my next door neighbors was doing the business, right? And having that as my environment, having my heroes being gang members, right? Because they're, they're flossing, they, you know, they're doing it. They're, they're, they have more than what we have and not knowing what another way is, right? And I truly believe you can't be it unless you see it, right? You can't be it unless you see it. So giving examples of what's possible that, hey, I'm able to provide for my family to impact other people, to create a situation and circumstance to bring everybody out, you guys out, by being of service and by creating uh, great content to add value to people's lives, to help people with their health, right? Writing books, speaking, you know, creating recorded content, you know, via podcasts, things like that, and just opening up their paradigm. And also seeing the actors on screen who many of them look a lot like them and seeing, you know what, they're, I can potentially be a director or I can be a writer, I can be a videographer, right? And so it was a great experience. And here's the thing, bouncing from place to place, I didn't have time for a quote, sit down breakfast, like normal, you know, but my breakfast is generally later in the day because uh, you know, I generally prescribe to some intermittent fasting. I put in the show notes. Today, we're going to have a lot of show notes, shows to go back to, the hows, the whys, the real in-depth details on particular things. And so, you know, I did have my favorite coffee, but, you know, I found myself hours later at the theater getting all the kids in. I did a little talk for the kids beforehand. And luckily, I had a warrior bar. All right, from on it. So that was my saving grace because especially when you're giving a lot and it's an emotional experience, you tend to feel those hunger pangs come on a little bit stronger. All right, if you've given a lot. You know, a lot of people, you know, if they've had an emotional situation, this is a great time for uh, a chocolate muffin. All right, just like something to comfort, something to ground you. But I had that warrior bar and man, whoa, it hit the crazy spot. All right, so, and they're utilizing, so, you know, there's a lot of different bars out there um, even, you know, beef jerky and things like that. This is Buffalo. All right. So something more indigenous, incredibly, uh, beneficial ratio of amino acids and essential fatty acids. You just, just don't see in any other kind of like beef jerky and that kind of thing. All right. So, and they've got some spicy ones. I want you to be aware of that. So you get spicy or original. So, but incredible. And I love having like a case of those on hand. My son and I make sure we keep those like, you know, in our book bag when we're traveling, things like that. And plus, on it just released their brand new protein bars. Now, this is something you see everywhere as well. You can't go anywhere without seeing some protein bar options. But now we've got a company who does things the right way, really stepping into the game. And so they created a protein bar with not just a great ratio of macronutrients, but a great ratio of micronutrients. All right, so the protein bar, what I want you to be aware of, whatever protein bar you're buying, is be aware of the sugar content. We was on a protein bar, not a sugar bar. All right, protein bar not a sugar bar. And so they've got a uh, solid 15 grams of protein in here, only three grams of sugar. And man, I, I, I'm gonna say my expectations were pretty high, all right? And I was not expecting to like the bar this much. It's like, okay, I might not ever talk about this bar, but man, it was so good. It, I was just blown away how good it was. And they've also got in this micronutrient rich blend that combines all of these different superfoods so getting that abundance of micronutrients because micronutrients are what enable the macronutrients to actually do what they do. So you don't want a bar that's just protein, right? Even if that's what we want, we want a protein bar, not a sugar bar, but let's help our body to assimilate things and let's, let's give our body some key nutrients so it can do all the cool things that your body is designed to do, right? Deficiency in micronutrients is one of the leading causes of overeating. It's one of the leading, leading causes of fatigue. It's one of the leading causes of, you know, just things that we accept as normal, like you know, headaches, low energy, uh, even recovering from our workouts, right? Micronutrients are just as important, if not more important in some ways in building your body. All right, so pop over there, check them out. They got the new protein bar. They got the warrior bars. So it's called the On It Protein Bar, all right? Pretty simple. And the warrior bars, plus of course they got the hemp protein. They've got the uh, recovery protein that I love to use. Uh, post-workout as well, you get 10% off everything. The foods, the supplements, the gear, the workout equipment, head over to onit.com forward slash model. That's O-N-N-I-T.com forward slash model. You get 10% off everything 
always. All right, so head over there and check them out. And now let's get to the iTunes review of the week. Another five-star review titled, If I Could Hug a Podcast, I Would Hug the Model Health Show. Love it. By Haida. The Model Health Show never disappoints when it comes to bringing the wonderful liciousness. I sometimes have the hardest time selecting a show because I can't decide what I would like to learn. With every podcast I listen to, I feel enriched. The caliber of the guest you're able to have for us is a testament to your knowledge and expertise. Sean, I am truly thankful that fitness of the whole being is a passion of yours and you're sharing it. The Model Health Show is worth its weight in gold. Thank you for providing this powerful and valuable podcast. Daphne. Wow, thank you so much for leaving me that review over on iTunes. I appreciate it immensely. And you said something very powerful, fitness of the whole being. And how timely is that because of today's show, right? It's not just the food we eat. It's not just the the movement and exercise practices. It's not just the sleep, even though we, we know now how much that matters with our body composition, our brain function, but it's also our relationships. It's fitness of the whole being. We have to address this piece because your relationships affect your sleep, all right? Your relationships affect your food choices. Your relationships affect your movement practices, right? You got to keep all of this in mind and it definitely impact your stress. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dive into today's show topic and we're talking about ROR, return on relationships. And so throughout today's entire show, I want you to keep this in mind. All relationships start with you, all right? All relationships start with you and how you perceive your own value, all right? That's where it really starts, how you perceive your own value. You're going to tolerate what you believe you're worth, all right? You're going to engage with what you believe you're worth. And I've said this repeatedly, that the number one driving force of the human psyche is to stay congruent with the ideas that it carries of itself, all right? So if you believe yourself to be a certain way, you're not gonna go too far outside that paradigm, all right, without something snapping you right back right? Either in a progressive way or in a negative way, you're going to find yourself back at your kind of set point, all right? Because your whole perception of reality is to keep you congruent with who you believe yourself to be, all right? So all relationships start with you and your perceived value. So that's where we really want to do the work is improving our perceived value of self. And we just recently did an episode dedicated to this on something that might not at first glance seem very scientific, but we brought some science into the fold and this is a, an episode we did on self-love, right? And understanding this important relationship with you first and how that's a trickle-down effect to your other relationships. So of course, we'll put that in the show notes. I've never received that much um, just inflow of messages and man, it just really blew me away. I was not expecting that to happen with that particular episode, but uh, I'm just very grateful. So make sure to check that one out if you happen to miss it. And so also a big part of relationships you know, we all have that one negative friend or maybe two, but negative friend or, or, or family member even who might be, you know, negating the things that you do, might be just hating on you. Or if you don't have them, it might be you. All right? You might be that person. And so I want you to do a self-analysis and see if you're abiding by some of the things that we're talking about today. All right. This is, a, it's important gut check for us and also understanding, you know, We've got some people in our lives that it might not be the easiest thing for us to deal with. But the question I want you to start with is, are you actively working on getting better yourself? Because we can't just point at the, our relationships, you know, point the fingers that, you know, it's their fault. This is, they're making it harder for me. What are you doing? Are you actually doing your best to make the relationships better? All right. So this today is not about copping out and just be like, you know, I've outgrown this relationship. I've outgrown you. Sean is not saying to break up with anybody, all right? It might be the end result, but that's not my advice to you. My advice to you is to make sure that you are doing your part as well and doing a really uh, intelligent self-assessment. Now, one of the biggest reasons that I wanted to do this particular episode is that I have finally, I have finally embraced fully just how important relationships are, all right? And not just my intimate relationship. I got that a long time ago but my relationships in my, in my field of work, my relationships, um, you know, even when it comes to, you know, people that inspire me and, and keep me accountable, right? I'm not somebody that needs a lot of motivation, but why not, right? It just makes you better. And so I'm fully embracing this because I definitely had this lone wolf syndrome, all right? 
And I know a lot of people listening have done this as well. And I, I believe that if you're going to accomplish anything of real substance, of true, true impact in this world, it's going to be with and through the help of other people. And I came into the game having been, you know, let down many times by other people in my, in my family and also even professionally friends, that kind of thing. And there's one consistency, me. I was a consistent part of all of those things and all the stories I would tell myself. I needed to improve me. And that's where the work really needed to start. And so, but bef I was doing that process as I was understanding and finally waking up to the fact that I've got this lone wolf syndrome. So you might be like, what is lone wolf syndrome? Is that like, is it contagious? Does it make you grow hair? Have you seen Teen Wolf? I'm not talking about that. Lone wolf syndrome is this idea that we carry that we can do it all. We don't need anybody's help, right? I had that bad. Like, I don't, I don't need you. I don't need anybody's help. I'm going to do this thing. Now, we do need a streak of self-confidence and a willingness to persevere besides the fact of other people not maybe, you know, being on the same page with you or assisting you or even trying to hold you back. You do need that. But again, if you're going to do anything of real substance, of great substance, it's not going to be alone. All right. So this lone wolf syndrome was a result of, you know, uh, it's ego because I really felt like nobody cares as much as I do. Nobody cares to help people as much as I do. Right. I want to change the world in a positive way. I want to make sure that kids are not suffering. I want to make sure that, you know, people are not being stricken with cancer, not having solutions. And nobody cares as much as me. So I'm going to work my face off and I'm going to do everything that I can because nobody cares as much as me. Now, having that approach to my work, it did, it did a lot of damage. All right. It, it sucked a lot of life out of me. All right. So I'm in a clinical practice seeing people every day and having this attitude like I am fully responsible for this person Man, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm wiped out. That leaves very little for myself, very little for my, the love of my life, very little for my kids. But here's the thing, I still showed up in all of those areas, but I was dipping so far into my reserves, right? Into my container that I was starting to see negative symptoms take place, okay? This could be in the form of agitation. This could be in the form of low energy. This could be in the form of something chronic, like a, a serious problem pops up because you're dipping so far into that reserve. And we've talked about this several times, you know, when Lisa Nichols was on the show and also uh, with Christine Hassler, but this concept of giving from your overflow, right? Giving from your overflow. So having your own cup that needs to be filled first so that you're not, again, draining your cup every day, right? It's like when you're trying to get the last little bit of that Slurpee, right? You're like, and it's like that loud, weird sound, right? That's, that's how a lot of us are walking around with that kind of energy. It's like, there's barely anything there. It's a lot of air, right? A couple little flavor bits, right? But the reality is we want to fill our cups up so much so that it's overflowing, right? And, she, and Lisa Nichols says, giving from my saucer, right? So that's having the cup on the little saucer. So it's fancy, all right, but having that as your setup and giving from your overflow and your saucer can be big, right? If you're taking care of yourself and giving to yourself. So that's number one. So I had this concept, nobody cares like I do. And also this idea that, you know, no one is going to figure things out like I can, right? I was very good at understanding symptoms, at reverse engineering diseases. And I was very good at making sure that I found that leverage point within the person so that they actually take it on, right? There was definitely a, a skill set there for sure. But to think that I'm the only person that can do that, it's just, again, that's an ego that will put you in a position where you're not able to grow and develop and truly make the impact that you're capable of by working with other people. All right. So keep in mind, check in with yourself. Do you have this lone wolf syndrome? A lot of perfectionists, right? I kind of have that streak with some things as well tend to carry that, right? Like nobody can do it better than me. You don't know that you're doing it, but you just want things a certain way. And that's beautiful, right? You have a high standard. But please understand that there are many people who can do a great job, if not better than you, and things that don't really need your time and energy. And it's just taking away from everything else. Okay, so I hope that's making sense for you. So really quickly, since we're on the topic of self-relationship first, before we get into these other really hard-hitting facets of 
ROR in our external relationships. So I want to hit you with this first. So these are the five components of your daily self-care. This is just making sure you've got enough in your cup, period. All right, so let's start off with this. So number one, really simple, is hydration. All right, super simple. All right, you've heard this before. Human body is like 70, 80% water. Now listen, that's not exactly true because the water, water is known as the universal solvent. So it really interacts with things and becomes it, right? Um, so the water in your body is actually in other forms at this point, right? So blood is not water, right? Your kidney tissues, there's a substantial amount of base components that are made from water, but it's not water anymore, right? So I want you to keep that in mind. You, but you need to provide that base nutrient in the form of water for your body to do all of the, the things that it's capable of, right? From your synovial fluid to um, your cerebral spinal fluid, your blood, your blood is a large constituent of that. You're, when you drink water, it becomes your blood relatively quickly, like within some minutes, all right? Your body knows how to um, transpose that over, all right? So make sure we're hydrated because even a 1% drop in your uh, normal level of hydration or optimal level of hydration can cause damage to your DNA, all right? It can start to have you print out bad, or, bad copies of yourself. I said badder. All right, that's the Michael Jackson remix. Uh, so here's the thing. And by the way, as soon as I think about the video bad, I immediately think about Weird Al Yankovic. I don't know if you guys remember that. He's, the video was, you know, I'm fat, right? You know I'm fat. It was, as a kid, hilarious. All right, we'll put that in the show notes too if you haven't not seen it. It's pretty messed up though. Looking back, like, you can't do that today. All right, Weird Al. But that's why he's weird, all right? It's in his name. So number one, hydration, making sure that we're getting an optimal amount of hydration for our tissues, specifically to start your day. And that's how we do it, taking your inner bath to start your day. Uh, within the first 30 minutes of getting up, 20 to 30 ounces of high quality structured water. So again, this topic, we're gonna have a lot of different links for things we're covering today because we literally did a masterclass on hydration and water. All right, so all your questions answered. It's one of the most downloaded uh, health and fitness podcast episodes on iTunes in history. So cool. So put that in the show notes if you happen to miss it. All right. Number two, movement. All right. This is how you're going to fill your cup up. Exercise isn't about getting abs. All right. I hate to break it to you. That's a side effect. That's a side effect of certain practices. The real need, like your genes require you to exercise. Your genes require you to move in order to, number one, again, when we talk about our DNA, just not damaging your DNA because you're docile, all right? You need movement in order for your DNA to function properly. And essentially, you know, the, the chromosomes, everything that's going on behind the scenes, we're making good copies of you. If you're not moving, your body's not grooving, all right? It's not, it's not in the flow. Number two, this is just kind of a visceral thing, something hard hitting to remember. Movement is required to move your lymphatic system, all right? Your lymphatic system is your body's, I, I liken it to a, a waste management system, all right? You have all this extracellular fluid. Again, this goes back to that water, all right? All this extracellular fluid, so this is not in your bloodstream, but you have four times more lymph fluid, this extracellular fluid, this sewage waste management system, than you have blood, all right? But here's the difference. Your blood has a pump, well, a glorified pump in your heart. It's not just your heart that's doing the job, but that enables it to move and circulate throughout your body and get everywhere that it needs to go to deliver nutrients and to remove a waste products. We need that lymphatic system to be doing its job. And your lymphatic system does not move efficiently, if at all, unless you're moving. All right, I want you to really understand that it doesn't have a pump. Movement is the pump. It's like a one-way valve system that runs up your body, okay? And you have to move in order for it to move or your body literally starts to accumulate all of this metabolic waste. And you become like an internal cesspool. And you can have a little teeny little cesspool or a big nasty one or Toxic Avenger is gonna pop out, all right? You get to choose. So this is why movement matters. This is filling your cup, making sure you have a daily movement and or exercise practice. Number three, and this is important as well, and filling your cup is personal development. At this point, if this is not a part of your day, I'm here to remind you that it's not just when the Model Health Show comes out, you know, each week. It's 
daily. Maybe it's going back and listening to some some past shows like a lot of folks do. And I love those messages because you're really, you're really in the game in a, in, in a higher way than most people. That's how I got into this at this level was listening to my, my teachers over and over and over. I'd listen to lectures over until it literally became a part of my, my brain, right? Physical structure. And this personal development process, a practice needs to happen daily, even if it's just five minutes to really feed your spirit to get yourself a, a message, to get, to do your inner inner work, right? Not just your external work for exercise and movement, but get your inner game on point. All right, so I hope that makes sense. And I love the quote from Zig Ziglar, all right, the legendary Zig Ziglar. He said that people often say that motivation doesn't last. Well, neither does bathing. That's why we recommend it daily. All right, so it doesn't last. You need to keep bringing it in daily. Fill your own cup with some uh, soulful, uh, valuable, something to help with your mindset, information, all right, daily. All right, so that's number three on these five components of daily self-care. Number four, you've got to make sure you're getting your base nutrients in, all right? Your body is not able to regenerate your tissues unless it has the raw materials to do so. And I know this intimately because at the age of 20, I was diagnosed with a degenerative bone disease, right? So my bones are deteriorating. I broke my hip just from running as a kid, all right? How is that even possible? I wasn't giving my body the raw materials that it needed to regenerate. And by the way, my physicians at the time told me that, oh, this is, this is incurable. Like there's nothing you can do about this. But cut to today, all right? So many, many years later and seeing a situation where I've completely reversed the issue, my bone density is greater than that of my peers, you know, in my age group. And, you know, my spinal degeneration, my ruptured, uh, two ruptured discs retracted and healed on their own. I'd regenerated the tissue of my, my vertebrae, all right? Just, it's incredible what's possible, but you have, your body knows what to do, but you have to give your body the raw materials it needs to do the job. It's really simple. Like, this is really simple. If you think about your body like a house, right? And this is house you want to do some uh, renovation, you want to expand on, you want to get better, and you're trying to do it like, you know, somebody brings in a whole barrel full of like um, <laughs> nipple pasties and like uh, Pez dispenser candy. All right. Not the Pez dispenser itself, but the Pez dispenser candy. Like, here you go. Like, put those up. This is going to be your new house. All right. You're going to make a new room with Pez dispenser candy and nipple stickers. All right. It's not going to do a very good job. All right. How about we bring in the, the brick and mortar? How about we bring in the sustainable materials that your body actually needs to do the job? All right. And so for me, I found out that for my bone health, it w I got caught up in the marketing like so many of us do. Right. Milk does a body good. Right. Milk is for strong bones. It's marketing. All right, it's marketing. Billion dollar industry. I found out there were nutrients that were Equally as important and many more important than the calcium for my body to actually absorb and utilize and create that bone density that I needed for me to have my life back, not just back, but better than it ever was. All right. So we're thinking about like uh, magnesium. We're thinking about silica. We're thinking about sulfur bearing amino acids. We're thinking about uh, vitamin K2. There are so many factors that I discovered. And I was like, okay, I need to get those nutrients in my body. All right. Food is the way. That's food first always, because this is something that our, our genes have been interacting with longer than a synthetic supplement. But also today, listen, we're in a different circumstance where even the food grown in uh, organic conditions, the soil isn't the same. We're not getting the same amount of nutrients. So I do recommend that we have an insurance policy, but we want to do it from a food source, right? From a concentration of superfoods. That's why I use Organifi, all right? And yesterday after going through my day, and, you know, the, the emotions and being on the move, man, to be able to lean on Organifi when I need it, it's just the best. And it just makes you feel, I mean, and everybody knows it's had it, I mean, the people listening, that you just, you literally feel cleaner. Like you just, it makes you feel clean. And, and I'm very, I'm, I'm a very analytical person, but it's just a constituent, it's, it's the constituents that's within it. You know, it's got the, um, number one, we've got spirulina, we've got chlorella, we've got these great sources of chlorophyll right, which is kind of a, a cellular detoxification uh, nutrient in and of itself, the mint, 
all of those things just kind of make you feel clean. And here's the thing. It's sort of like a built-in accountability. And I heard my friend CJ say this uh, from the Secrets to Success podcast. And he said that it's very difficult for you to have the Organifi and then go get a Big Mac. All right. It just changed, like you, you feel so good and so clean, you don't want to mess it up. So he said it's kind of like a, a internal accountability partner, which was amazing that he said something like that. Cause like, yeah, that makes sense. Like you, you just feel good. You don't, it doesn't, you don't want to be in that, uh, a different parallel universe where, you know, that's the thing to do is hitting up the White Castles, right? So anyways, listen, this is something that I use that I give to my family. I think it's the number one uh, green superfood blend by far. It's from low temperature processed superfoods, all right? So they're actually paying attention to detail to make sure they're not actually destroying or denaturing the nutrients that you're trying to get from these different superfoods, all right? Spirulina being one of the highlights for me. I've been using, utilizing spirulina for over 10 years because 71% protein by weight, number one protein food on the planet, all right? But these are bioavailable nutrients, Okay, so your body can actually utilize these. Complete protein, also rich in chlorophyll, phycocyanin, which is uh, found clinically to improve stem cell genesis, right? Stem cell genesis. You just can't get that from Centrum Silver, all right? You just can't, all right? So make sure to check them out, Organifi.com forward slash model. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash model. You get 20% off everything from Organifi. All right, so head over there, check them out. Again, Organifi.com forward slash model for 20% off. All right, so get your base nutrients in daily, all right? It would be in your best interest to try to knock this out earlier in the day. So if you do find yourself in a situation where a slice of pizza is in your hand, you know you got a lot of those base nutrients in already. All right, I hope that makes sense. It doesn't, it's not about being perfect. It's just doing the best we can to get those base nutrients in. All right, number five here. So these are the five components of your daily self-care. Number five is rest. This is where your grind, this is where your, your passion, your, your continuous moving forward in your life is actually all processed and becomes you, all right? And I'm not just saying this. One of the big processes that take place during sleep specifically REM sleep, is something called memory processing. This is where we're taking your experiences, like the things you're learning now, and this gets driven deeper into your short-term memory, like literally becoming a part of your brain, the physical structure of your brain. I think about the movie Inside Out and these files getting put away and whether or not they're readily available for when you need them. That happens during sleep. It's really profound, right? So this is where the grind, where you assimilate the grind. It's where you assimilate the good food, where you assimilate the exercise, where your body really changes with the release of all these anabolic hormones that happen in the greatest degree when you're sleeping. All right, so keep that in mind. We have to take rest, specifically high quality sleep. You already know the master classes on this. We'll put one of the episodes. If you don't have Sleep Smarter, international bestseller. Oh my goodness, I'm just blown away to be able to say this. Uh, we just agreed to, so now it's going to be published in Romania. All right, so it's getting another translation. So we're getting close to 20 different languages, country slash countries. And uh, wow, it's just taken on a life of its own. It's a phenomenon. And it's because it's time. It's time for us to respect the grind. All right, it's time for us to really take care of this missing component for so many of us to fill up our cup so that we're giving from our overflow. All right, so I just want to hit those five real quick. Again, we've done master classes on all of these, but I want to make sure that when we're talking about our relationships, it starts with us. All right, it starts with us taking good care of us. So let's go ahead and move on. And now we're gonna dive into the eight specific signs that we either need to make some assessments and some adjustments in our relationships and or move on from our relationships. All right, so now we're gonna dive into the eight different signs. So the eight specific signs that we need to adjust and or reassess and or move on from relationships. All right, so this episode, again, this is about ROR, return on relationships, and making sure that we're investing in the right way and making sure that we're investing in a way that is advantageous to us and the people that we care about. All right, so an important caveat, this is in parentheses here. Keep in mind, again, this does not mean that your relationship is supposed to be all easy. All right, please believe that is not the case, will never be the case, all right? But there's a difference between challenge, problems and problem solving, and struggle, all right? You don't have to struggle. You don't have to struggle to be happy. You don't have to struggle to have 
good relationships that are fulfilling to you. You don't have to struggle to, to feel good, all right? This is your birthright. But please keep in mind, it's not all rosy posy, all right? Sometimes you do have things that you need to address that you need to, you know, metaphorically fight for sometimes, you know? So just keep that in mind. This is not uh, a, a, a promotion that relationships are supposed to be easy. That's not the case. However, we can make our relationships much easier, much more graceful. And that's the word I want you to identify with. More grace in your relationships, right? Investing versus spending. Like something that's having a return, right? R-O-R, return on relationship. Okay, so keep that in mind as you move forward. So the first thing that I want to address and another little caveat here is that I want you to, I want you to stop settling, all right? I want you to stop settling for less than, all right? I want you to stop lowering your standards because you feel like you're going to be losing your relationships, all right? Because what we need to identify is that in some instances, we need to make room. We need to make room for the relationships that really match us. We, re we need to make room for those relationships that are really going to up-level our lives in every area in some instances. We need to make room. How can you add in more pieces? How can you add in those supportive relationships if you're already so concerned over here with, with what's going on, you know, with fill in the blank, right? Sometimes we need to make room. So I want you to stop settling. That doesn't mean we don't invest in what's going on currently and find out a way to, to improve it, but just keep this in mind, stop settling, all right? So another part is you've gotta be clear on what you want. All right, you've gotta be absolutely clear on what you want. What are your standards? Do you have standards? Right? You're like, you know what? I'm looking for this perfect guy and um, he's going to be, you know, uh, he's going to work out all the time and he's going to uh, really be nice to my mom, you know, and that's it, right? And so you meet this guy, he's super nice to your mom. He works out all the time. He's a beast. But then he's smoking like Marlboros, right? He comes in the house smelling like Marlboros. And it's just like that, I didn't have that as my standard, like somebody who was not, not a smoker, right? If that's not your cup of tea, like, so what are your standards? Like, what are the things you're willing to, uh, not, I don't like the word tolerate. I don't like that at all. All right, we shouldn't have to tolerate people. We shouldn't have more tolerance, right? We should be able to appreciate, have more appreciation and acceptance for who people are, what people are, what they do, right? Not tolerance. So what are you looking for specifically uh, in your relationship so that you can have more appreciation for them, all right, and not struggle with tolerance for behaviors. I hope that makes sense, okay? So here are some signs, again, eight signs that you need to make some adjustments in your relationships, and many of these can apply to your intimate relationship, family relationships, friendships, business relationships, and more. So apply it where necessary. And so number one here on this list, number one is when the relationship brings you more hurt than happiness, okay? When the relationship brings you more hurt than happiness. This is a very simple one when we're talking about ROR, right? Return on relationship. That's an investment and it's coming back to you with benefit rather than it's coming back to you with loss after loss after loss. You're not investing intelligently if you're struggling with more hurt than happiness. Sometimes you're gonna be hurt. Relationships are gonna hurt sometimes, but is it a struggle? Right? Is this a struggle just to be happy and maintain a certain level of happiness or maintain a certain level of, uh, of peace within yourself, right? Now, even when I'm saying this, when you're hearing this from me, I want you to be clear. No one can make you happy, all right? I know this sounds crazy, especially when we're talking about this particular to show topic, but no one can make you happy, all right? Happiness is something that happens from within you, all right? This is something that is happening with your, within your own mind and body. It's a decision that we make in many ways. It's just mostly unconscious, right? Because we're allowing our environment to dictate. We're responding to our environment. And how you respond is what creates your feeling, right? Your perception of what's going on around you is what creates the biochemistry in your body. Literally changes your hormones based on how you perceive a situation, right? And this happens all the time. We can perceive a situation that wasn't that bad very negatively and we can overreact, right? We got all this chemical soup happening in our body. We're extra irritated, upset, and it wasn't even that big of a deal. Like we've all done that, 
right? So happiness is something that is coming from within you. So nobody can make you happy. People can definitely give you an obstacle course in finding your happiness, all right? Definitely, all right? You got the ropes course over here. You've got the mud pit person. You've got the electric fence person, right? There are definitely conditions, but still you get to decide, right? So when you tackle that electric fence, right, are you actually going to, you know, put on some protective gear or are you just going to run face first into it, right? So these are things that we get to decide. So number one, something we need to assess and adjust, pay attention to, sign that we might need to move on or again, adjust is when the relationship brings you more hurt than happiness. This one was pretty simple. So we're going to dive in a little bit deeper now. So number two, and again, this is our list of the eight signs that you need to reassess, adjust, and or move on from your relationships. Number two is they only come around when they want something. All right. They only come around when they want something. What kind of ROR is that? Right. I haven't heard from you. And now you want you want a hundred dollars. Doesn't make sense. Right. They only come around when they want something. And so I'm going to be fully transparent here. I've, I've talked about this a little bit on past episodes, but you know, my relationship with my mother is, <laughs> I'd say complicated to say the least, you know, she's definitely, after I moved from my grandmother's house and moved in with my mom in the inner city, she wasn't doing too well, you know, but she was finding a way. I learned from her how to survive, how to make something out of nothing, how to show up. And she, she did do a lot of little special things for me, but it was also a very violent atmosphere every day. I mean, she's yelling at the top of her voice. I'm just in fear all the time, right? And then there's physical abuse as well. And, you know, this, but she's just responding to the way that she, she didn't want to be like that. You know, she still doesn't want to be necessarily the way she is today. She's better. But the situation that I was in, I don't have a mom that was this, you know, hugging me and, you know, telling me she loves me. I didn't have that kind of relationship. But that can leave a hole in somebody, you know. And again, this is why I was approaching things with that lone wolf attitude as part of the reason. But as I grew and developed, especially with my personal practices for, for, for personal development, you start to see like, whoa, I'm missing that level. You can't really keep climbing your life on a, a shoddy foundation, right? And building your life up. You got to address this level. And so I finally accepted my, my wife, her love and her admiration and her attention. Like there was barriers there that I didn't even know existed. And my wife's mother, like, in many ways, she is, she's just this mother figure for me. Like, I want to have a mother that I can just, you know, go to her house and, and hang out and, you know, hey, ma, like, I just don't have that, you know? And this is not a, a sob story. This is not a situation where it's like, man, that, I mean, it is messed up, but I'm very happy and, and comfortable with where I am today. And what I wanted to allude to was a situation where, you know, um, when I was dealing with my degenerative spinal disease, um, well, that degenerative spinal disease is not mine, but I was living in my college apartment and I was literally paying my rent with like my refund check from my scholarship money and from grants because I was not, I was not working, right? I was out on this work, workman's comp leave, whatever it was. And this was my last payment. And so my mom needed some money. It was a dire situation, which it always is. And she said, she'd give it right back. I gave her the money for my rent, right? And it was due in two weeks. She said, you know, I promise I'll give it back. <sighs> two weeks later, no reply. I can't get a call back. You know, I'm texting her. I'm sorry, not texting, beeping her. All right, this was with a beeper, okay? Can't get no call back. It wasn't until, you know, a week and a half later and I'm dialing from somebody else's phone and I finally get her. I'm just like, what happened? And she said that, oh, the check, I mailed it to your office, to your uh, renter's office. First of all, she didn't have the address of my office. Second of all, that's my money. You don't mail it. In. Like, it's just, it was a story. And there's a part of me that wanted to believe it. And, you know, I'm, I called the office several times, like, hey, did you get a check? You know, my mom said she sent it. Nothing. My mom was willing to have me out on the street because of, you know, she only comes around when she wants something and then she disappears. And literally this just happened 
a couple weeks ago, about a month ago. Uh, she was having surgery and she needed to pay her rent for a couple of months because she's going to be out of work. And she was calling me she, even a week before she asked. Like she was texting me, hey, just trying to see how you're doing. And, you know, just hearing from her all the, like almost daily until I gave her that check. I, I did it because this is what I want you to understand. Just because people might do this, especially with our family, this doesn't mean that you don't love them. This doesn't mean that you don't be there. To, even if they're not living up to their character values that you're looking for, this doesn't mean that you can't be of high standard and high quality. All right. And so I did. I took care of her rent for a couple of months and I haven't heard from her since. I haven't heard from her since. All right. It's been about a month now. And so number two, you need to reassess and possibly move on when you're in relationships, when they only come around when they want something. All right. Be aware of that because it happens for all of us. You know, there are people that are just takers and it might be people that are really close to you. It might be, you know, kind of uh, associates. But just be mindful of that. And this doesn't mean that you just turn and run. Just be aware of what it is, because I know what it was. I wasn't expecting to hear from her again. And I definitely wasn't giving her a loan. Here, he like, just take it. I'm good, right? That's my mom. So, you know. And so I just want to share that story with you. And I want to give you a good example, because this just popped into my mind, actually. Um, somebody who I've had on the show, uh, he has another incredible podcast, uh, Lewis Howes. You know, my friend Lewis Howes. And I might not hear, you know, we might not be in contact maybe for a couple months at a time sometimes. And he shot me a text like he had this the new book coming out. It's like, uh, you want something, bro, right? He's got the mask masculinity coming out. Of course, I'm going to support my guy. But here's what Lewis does. Every time I talk to him, he's finding a way to help me. He's finding a way to connect me with people. Uh, it, for example, Steve Weatherford, who we just had on the show recently, um, in, uh, Lewis introduced, we were just hanging out. He's like, Hey, do you know Steve Weatherford? And I was like, no, I don't. And Steve even was listening. He listened to the model health show. He was listening to the show, but we weren't connected. You know, Super Bowl champion, the NFL's fitted man, fittest man twice, right? Incre five kids. And he's doing all of this stuff and just, you know, building this incredible fitness and motivation brand and being great dad, right? It's just really remarkable. And being able to connect, like, He's always looking for a way to give, not just take, all right? So I want you to be mindful of that. How do we go about that when people are coming around, they want something, but what are they also adding to your life? Because I'm gonna be much, much more proactive in my relationship with Lewis than even with, you know, um, our, you know, my family member sometimes, you know? So you just keep that stuff in perspective. It's not always easy. But uh, it's de definitely there for your longevity and for your good. All right, so let's move on to number three. All right, so number three on the eight signs that we need to be proactive about uh, looking at these particular eight signs to reassess, adjust, and or move on from our relationships. Number three is that the relationship is causing you to sacrifice your integrity. All right, the relationship is causing you to sacrifice your integrity. So this could be, you know, when you start cutting corners, when you start... Um, you know, in a business context, let's talk about that for this example. And you've partnered up with some folks and, you know, you guys are looking to make a buck, but it's at the expense of taking advantage of people, right? You can get, you know, you get the get, got, got the get rich quick thing going, but you're sacrificing your integrity to, to get it, right? You're trying to meet one goal at the sacrifice of other people's happiness and well-being, just be mindful of that, all right? When the relationship is causing you to sacrifice your own integrity and do things that you know in your heart and soul doesn't feel good to you. All right, number four. Number four is you're staying in the relationship expecting that they'll change, right? A lot of us get into relationships on the idea of the person and not the actual person. Like, I know that they're doing this and that, you know, these things that aren't the best, but they're going to change, they're going to grow out of it. They're going to mature. Guess what? A lot of times people don't or they don't with you because you allow it. Right. So I want you to keep that in mind. A lot of people expect that they're going to be able to change somebody. Right. You don't got that kind of power. Right. You can't change people. People change when they want to change. You literally cannot change anybody but yourself. And so we keep having the audacity to get into relationships and saying, 
oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make them better. That's a concept, right? There's songs about it. You make me better, right? Neo, you make me better. No, you don't. You make yourself better. They give conditions for you to decide whether or not you're going to get better, all right? It's within us, not them. So we cannot expect somebody to change. We cannot get in a relationship thinking that this is a home improvement job, okay? Don't do that, all right? Oh, this man, he's giving me a project. I like projects. Well, guess what? When the house gets rebuilt the way that you want, possibly, it's probably not gonna be with you, all right? Because no, and people especially do not like somebody to come in wanting them to change or wanting to change them. All right, so keep that in mind. You're staying in a relationship expecting that they'll change, just doing, hitting your head against a wall over and over and over again. It doesn't work that way. You've gotta have the audacity to let it go or confront the situation with grace so that you can figure out and be uh, and communicate exactly what you want and what you're expecting instead of just sitting around hoping and waiting that they're gonna change at some point because chances are it's not gonna happen, all right? So again, but caveat here, people, people can change, of course. And people are gen generally very good, but we are res responding to our environment. We're responding to the way that we were loved or the way that we were raised, the conditions that we were in a lot of times looking for success and happiness in our own ways, right? So keep that in mind. This isn't just like people can't change. This is a situation where you wanna be conscious of, am I in this situation? And I keep expecting they're gonna change at some point, but really they've shown their history has given me a great indication that they're good with who they are. And this is just the way it is. And we get into that place of, okay, do I wanna be more accepting? Not tolerant, accepting of who they are. And this is gonna make me happy. All right, so number five, when they expect you to change, and they're not working on themselves. So this is another one, a sign that we might need to reassess, adjust, or move on from a relationship when they're expecting you to change, right? You like you, you like you, and you know that you're not hurting nobody, right? You're actually out maybe giving tremendous value to the world, but it, maybe there's small things about you that they want to change, right? And you feel like this is, this is taken away from my character. This is taken away from my heart and my soul of who I am as a person. You shouldn't have to do that. There's a lot of caveats within this though. This doesn't mean that you don't listen and understand and possibly, possibly make the assessment that, you know what, this would be better for me if I do change. Because life is really, again, it's all about growth. It's all about development. Life is movement. And you get to decide which move you're making, right? Which direction you're actually moving in. Okay, because again, life is movement. The very sign that life is over is there's a cease, there's a ceasing of movement. And so keeping all of this stuff in context and realizing, wait, you know, if somebody's expecting to change me and that doesn't feel good to my heart and my soul, my spirit, have the audacity to say no. However, if this is a valuable relationship and it, and it, and it is joyful and it's contributing you, there's good ROR and there's a, a character trait that you're expressing that might not be conducive to that relationship, just be willing to assess it, be willing to address it and look at like, is this something that I'm willing to, to change, all right? So just keep that in mind. All right, so let's move on. Again, these are the eight signs that we need to reassess, adjust and or move on from a relationship. And number six is they don't celebrate your wins, all right? They don't celebrate your wins. This might be a really big sign that you need to move on and or readjust these relationships, all right? They don't celebrate your wins. Or worse, or worse, they fake celebrate your wins, all right? There's even songs about this, right? I got fake people showing fake love to me. You, you know the song? I hope you know the song. This is something that happens a lot, right? So they're not celebrating your wins or they fake celebrate your wins, right? They're like, good for you. Don't ever say that. Don't say good for you, all right? If you truly appreciate or are happy for somebody, say it, mean it. Use those words and that context and that emotion to celebrate with them, for them, all right? This is an area where it's pretty complex. So when you're doing better, when you're maybe you're working on uh, getting your health in order, right? And you've accomplished that, um, you know, maybe it's 20 
pound weight loss. And you come around your friends and they're just like, you're not as big, right? That's not a celebration of your hard work, right? Think about that stuff. It's like, is that what I'm really, like all of this that I'm putting in to become a better person and you're just like, oh, you're not as big. Or another thing is, you know, you come around, they see that your body's changed and, you know, you know you've lost this weight and there's like, you went from a extra, extra large jacket to an extra large. Can I have your jacket? Like, what can they get? Instead of just celebrating the beauty and celebrating the, the consistency and the passion and celebrating with you, right? So be mindful of that. And also, we have to be mindful of this ourselves. I think this is something that can be a reflection a lot of times. Are you celebrating when other people win? Especially when you know it could have been you. Think about that. You know, especially with social media today where you see people's highlight reels. All right, you're not seeing the real reels. You're seeing the highlight reels and you see somebody accomplish something that literally like you could be there. You could be the one to have done that thing and you just hate it. Like you get it, you're feeling jealousy, right? You know, you're looking, you're scrolling your feet and all of a sudden like I'm peanut butter and jealous. I'm so peanut butter and jealous, but you don't know it. You just start like, oh, they this, they that, you know, lucky or whatever. Retrain yourself to celebrate when other people win. Celebrate when they win, especially if they're doing something that's advantageous to themselves and to the rest of the world, or at least another person, like they're doing something to uplift. <laughs> you have to celebrate that. Please celebrate when other people do good and do good for all of us because the rising tide raises all ships, all right? We got to stop with the jealousy, all right? This is a time for us to really be conscious of this and reprogram yourself because here's what happens. What you appreciate, appreciates. So this is that ROR, ROI. What you appreciate, appreciates. It grows in value and it will come back to you even more, right? Even more abundance. That energy you're putting out when other people win, guess what? It's just putting you in that same energy space for winning yourself rather than this space of constantly being jealous. And you're not gonna get over here through hate, right? You hear, you hear the little funny sayings, you know, don't hate, congratulate. No, seriously, this is like, I think that should be like an amendment to the constitution, actually. Like we slide that in because it's a principle of success, all right? So keep in mind, they don't celebrate your wins. All right, number seven here, and we're almost to the end of these eight signs that we need to reassess, readjust, or move on from relationships. Number seven, you keep being forced to justify their actions. All right, you keep being forced to justify their actions. You keep making excuses for people uh, sacrificing their integ integrity and or your integrity, uh, dipping below your standards and you make excuses for them. Oh, well, they're just going through this or, you know, well, this just happened or whatever. Like you keep making up these stories to justify uh, potentially damaging behavior. Don't do that, all right? Be honest. Like people do have hard days or they do have hard struggle points and that may contribute to how they are treating you or how they're acting within their own lives. But don't keep justifying it, right? Help them, support them. Don't just be like, oh, this is why you're doing that pointing fingers, just be aware, like helpful, help them to face whatever that is so that they can get back or better than they were before. All right. But don't just justify the behavior and let it keep happening. All right. You've got to be able to break, uh, break the pattern. Okay. So I hope that makes sense. This is a really, really important one here is stop justifying other people's behavior. This is something I struggle with a lot, especially when I become just more conscientious and, and more loving, more caring for other people, I constantly was doing this, you know? When in reality, like, sometimes people just do messed up stuff, you know? And it doesn't matter the reason why, this is something that I just can't accept. Like, just, I'm not gonna be the, the victim, right? So, that's number seven. And number eight, and this is the final one here today, is that they're not investing in the relationship in a meaningful way. All right, so when they're not investing in the relationship with you in a meaningful way. Now, this is taking pieces from other segments here, but this one specifically, I want to talk about this. And I've got another, uh, another story to share as well. 
And so even how we're doing this right now and I'm with you wherever you are right now in the world uh, with the Model Health Show is a result of a series of events, okay? So in short, I was doing a TEDx Sin City. So this was uh, in Las Vegas. It's like, I think this was 2012 maybe? All right, so this is a little while back. And I, I do a talk and then I meet this awesome couple and they had this big brand of health information online. And I had just gotten online. Like I had done like two crappy blog posts. We'll just call it what it is. It was crappy. All right. Very like I was writing for a scientific journal, not really being fully authentically me. Right. Just like the, making everything super smart. And whereas I prescribe today is Albert Einstein's uh, quote is that if you can't explain it simply, you don't know it well enough. Right. And so they come up to me and they're like, hey, this was amazing. I think, you know, we just started this podcast and we think that you'd be an incredible, like we need a face for the brand, right? And we've got this big platform. And I was like, cool, like this sounds amazing. Well, what's a podcast though? And so I didn't even know what a podcast was. And so long story short, we started it up and this was back in the day, like the resurgence just beginning with podcasts and we created something really special. But here's the thing, I did 99% of the work. All right, I'm talking like the research, the recording. This was just me and a microphone in my home office, all right? And, you know, today, like, I've got a team, right? I've got my guys here in the studio right now, you know, to support and do the things that I shouldn't be doing. I shouldn't be editing, right? Putting the intro, I shouldn't be doing that. I should be focusing on giving the gift and helping people and creating great great episodes and experiences for people, right? And so I was doing all of this and it went, it was about a year and a half, hundreds of thousands of downloads, which was huge then, right? Impacting a lot of lives, really brought a lot of value. Like I brought some big credibility to their brand, right? By me doing the work that I was doing. This is when I was really running my practice. And um, now here's the thing. And I still, I love these guys still. Like it was an incredible experience and opportunity but when it came time for me to have my own project that they, you know, uh, said they were going to support me on, it just, they didn't show up like they said they would, right? I put so much in, so much. And I mean, like, I'm, it's like scraps coming to me, right? And when it came time for that big moment for me, they weren't there and they knew it, you know, uh, specifically, uh, you know, the, the person who's running it all. And he's like, you know, Sean, listen, I'm, I know I told you that I would do this thing and I'm sorry. And that meant a lot just by him acknowledging like, listen, this isn't aligning up with what you said. And he wasn't contributing to my life in a meaningful way like I was contributing uh, to his and his brand. And so we amicably parted ways, right? He acknowledged that. I had my channel out and that's when I started the Model Health Show, right? So it was actually the greatest gift in the world for this to happen. And that's what's possible for all of us. These negative things that we go through, these challenges in our relationships can turn out to be the very best thing, but we have to make room. We have to be able to look at these things and assess them and to be honest, right? So that we can truly step into the great, amazing, abundant things that are available for all of us, all right? So I hope that you got a lot of value out of this episode today. I want you to take these things with you and start to assess your relationships in a more conscious way. All right, now this is, again, this is not about being perfect. This is not about having people do what you want them to do all the time. That will never happen. This is about having a great ROR, a great return on your relationship so that you're investing your time and energy into something that's really special so that you can take full advantage of your time here on the planet. All right, I appreciate you immensely. If you got a lot of value out of this, please make sure to share it out on social media right now, all right? Use your phone, use your app, use your computer, Share this out, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. And of course, you could tag me as well. And I appreciate you so much. We've got some incredible guests coming up. I'm, I'm pumped. It's going to blow your mind. Like We're going to just keep taking things to another level. So be ready. All right. Stay ready so that you have to get ready. I appreciate you immensely. Take care. Have an amazing day. And I'll talk with you soon.